All right, we're going to go over the schedule real quick here. We're going to look at some task items for the construction schedule in Excel. And what I want to do real quick is highlight on a few things. First of all, these columns that are light blue, these are the columns that you can edit. Of course, you can edit any other cell inside of this entire workbook, but try to stay within the parameters that this thing was designed. Obviously, task items are ones that you can edit. Uh, this first task item here, I just put it in there is one that you would put in whatever your task is and then your start date in this particular cell is generated by the start date of your schedule so if we go 08 1 09 it's gonna fix this start date here as well okay let's look at the one right below it notice that this says E10 plus 1 that means this cell here plus 1 date is going to equal 81609. That is going to happen no matter what. So we change this to a different date. It's still going to be the same thing. This date plus one day is going to be this start date here. Why do we do that? Well, this is to minimize the amount of work that you have to put into uh, developing a schedule for your project. So, for example, this first task item, it's going to start on July 26th. We've got 15 days. And because of that, we know that the next task item down is going to start the day after the 9th on the 10th. And uh, this will carry on all the way through. You'll notice all of these other cells do the exact same thing. Let's say you didn't want it to start one day after. Let's say you wanted to start it two days before the end of this one here. That's easy. You click in here and change this to minus two days. And there it is. Okay, and you can play with this any way you like in order to make this schedule work. And the reason we want to keep the formulas in here is that um, if you make any changes on the task items above, it'll dynamically change all of the other cells. So, for example, here, let's say in reviewing the schedule, we realize that this task is not going to take us 15 days. Let's say it takes us six days. Watch what happens over here. We're going to change this to six. See, everything moved back all of this stuff moved back. Now I'm going to undo that real quick and let's say we don't want to do the minus one day. Okay, let's say we we just don't do that altogether. I'm going to undo that as well. Get back to plus one here. See it's back to plus one. Let's say we know that we want to start that on the 10th. Well, if we enter 8, 10, 09, watch what happens when we change this now to 10 days. Oh, we'll go five days here. Nothing. This did not change at all. Only this task item changed. And when you get way deep into your schedule and you make an adjustment at the beginning of your schedule like that and you lose everything, it's no fun. And, and if you put schedules together, you know exactly what I mean. It's frustrating because you've got to go backwards and figure out where your mistake was. Rather than do that, what we did is design the schedule so that it's dynamically created. If you maintain the formulas within the cells, you'll never have to worry about whether or not your schedule's on track or not. This function is exactly the same in 2007 that we're looking at here as it is in 2003. Exactly the same. Stay within the light blue cells in these columns and you'll be just fine.